Uh, so I want to say good afternoon to Ard Ads. How you doing, my bro? I'm good, my bro. Thank you. How are you, man? I'm all right, man. We've been talking about dogs, bro. You, you half, I may have to take some of your litter, bro. <laughs> yeah, come Definitely. on. Come on. But, um, bro, let's start. So my my entry point in knowing you as an artist was always somebody who, one, you always made quality music. That was important. Thank you, bro. And you were consistent with it. I can't I can't say I've ever heard a dead Ard Ads song. And I always looked at like you, your beat selection was always impressive to me. Um, but this, the, the main narrative was independence and, and, and sticking to that independence mindset. And I think when you get to chance to do interviews with artists, it's always great to say, okay, what's going on next? What's, what's happening thereafter? But with you, you're now in a position where you're about to go into the new space of like NFTs and you're working yeah. with Opulus and my first question to you is what 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 excited you about working with Opulus for this type of um project? Um the main like one of the main things that excited me was that obviously um it it's gonna help me and my fans. And once I understood that, then I was like, okay, cool, this is sick and I wanna learn more and know more. Um that was the main thing that kinda intrigued me still, is that um my fans will be able to for once make money off of my song. And yeah, that's that's what kind of intrigued me and I just wanted to know more and more. With that being said though, very few, I that sounds mad. Some artists have just seem to be like, oh, I don't care. Mm. But I think you, you've you built a community of fans. Like even when we came up literally today, 10 seconds out of the car, a fan spotted you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's crazy and you so you do get that love. And I think this here is, like I say, an opportunity to further instill that relationship, even even like I say, giving back more yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's like obviously artists will sign deals with labels, and they don't mind when the label makes money off them. So I'm thinking, why why not just let our fans make money with us instead of labels, you know? Um, so that's that's kind of how I was. You get me thinking of it, and when I heard raw like. Um, It'll be, it won't just be like 10 fans or 20 fans, it'll be like 500, just quite a, a, a offer just one sort of project, like one release, 500 people, fans can be involved. And I was like, yeah, no, this is it. So that's what, that was the main thing that intrigued me. You get me? And um, yeah, man. Uh, so I do know a bit about the project, mm. but from you as the artist, so explain to me like a little bit what S NFTs are to your understanding. Um, so myself, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it fully. But what I do know is um, it's like uh, SNFTs are like um, sort of you can buy into like songs and music um, from an artist's release. That's what like a SNFT is. Um, it's like a, yeah, like a, a sound or like a song NFT sort of thing. And um, people will have the opportunity to make money from your musical release um, once the music is out. So they'll gain like a certain percentage of the royalties. And once the song starts making money, they'll start get making money as well. So that's kind of my understanding of it is like the basics. Um, it's sort of different to having just like a, a art NFT. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what it is. That's intriguing. So for you now, but how does it actually work then? Like, is it is it for a song? Is it for a, a mixtape? How? What's the process for you? How this project works? So this this um, particular project is for a song. Um, it's one of my tracks. It's a pain track, and basically how it would work is, I will still own fifty percent of my royalties, my rights, obviously, but the other fifty percent I'm breaking it down into five hundred NFTs. Um, for my fans to get involved. So that's where the other 50% is going to be. Um, fans will be shareholders and they'll have royalties on the SNFT, but I'll still be like the main, um, I'll still have 50% of the song. So nobody can like try to do anything funny and like claim all the rights for the song or something like that. You get me? So it still allows you to still be in effect independent, but you've created like a win-win yeah exactly. For all parties. Well, yeah, exactly. So what it is in terms that everyone will understand, normally my fans, when I put out a release, they'll just play the music, yeah? But they don't benefit from that. 
this time they get to benefit from it from my release they get to get involved and um yeah get get some perks and all of that and then also in terms of like the actual uh because I'm, I'm in the nft space like I've, mm. I've i've been buying a few nfts i've never bought any sound nfts but you know um so with yours like are you gonna have like the images that people can like yeah how, yeah, how does yeah. that part work for you yeah so there will also be um 500 images uh split into four different categories so there'll be the common ones um there'll be uh, rares super rares and ultra rares and off the top of my head i think there's like five ultra rares i think about um i think about 30 super rares 350 commons and like 100 um rares yeah, we'll do the maths but whatever it is yeah it adds up to 500 right yeah yeah, yeah it adds yeah, up yeah. to 500 and um basically yeah, so each each one is different in its own way, basically. Um, the rarer the NFT, the better perks you'll get with your NFT in it. Uh, so I, I, I told you, Abs, I'm not really a Spotify man. I'm, yeah. a, I'm an Apple Music fan, but, you know, it's, it's funny. Today we have everyone, everyone's always looking at numbers. Yeah, you know, yeah. I blame yeah. 50 Cent is the person who just disrupted the game. When Remember 50 was the first one to my first weeks. No one cared about sales yeah, yeah, until yeah, 50 yeah, yeah. was yeah, making yeah, it. Yeah. Polarize and everyone's now a mathematician. They say, right, how many hundred million streams? Right, ads must have made like. Yeah, yeah, everyone's doing all that now. Yeah. So what? I think what across the board, what? How, how many streams do you reckon you've got? Probably on average, I think off the top of my head, about hundred million still. Yeah. Totally independent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess with that being said, then I think, although you have your core fans, this is this is this is actually a viable, like investment. I mean, how do you see it? What I see it is is like there's Spotify, there's Apple Music, and there's like obviously your fans that listen to you on those platforms. But then there's this, and this is like, like I said, it's a whole new thing. And what it is, um, I'm just trying to right now at early stages, just trying to build like a community of my fans of like investors at the same time. Like, so once. That's that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to build a community of investors, basically. But but my fans, do you see what I'm saying? So the ones that really, really like when the seaman do well, it will benefit them if the song does well because obviously they get more money from the from the revenue. So yeah, and I feel like this is just the first one. Just you get me. Um, see how it goes and everything but definitely i feel like in the future i'm going to be doing more so this is just a single but um future wise i'm thinking like ep or even like a tape as an nft or you get me as a snft sorry so yeah, yeah man but yeah, bro what, what, where, what country are you from heritage right uh, morocco morocco, Fully morocco. Okay, yeah. north africa yeah um and i was saying to you like before i said like look a lot of um Nah, I got a lot of my friends are from Algeria, and like, I'm Nigerian. But one thing I always got of my North African friends is the culture runs deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Runs deep. So, you know, like Honcho is one of those people as well where yeah. he speaks about family a lot, mm -hmm. a lot about family. Family means a lot. And for you, um, like you, you, you talk about having, you know, a wife. A, a daughter, you got two kids. Yeah, yeah, I got a daughter. And, and a newborn, all right? Mm -hmm. But Brixton is a place where it's like, it's bare broken families. Not all, yeah, there's, there's yeah, some yeah. good families together. Yeah. How did you maintain your culture in that type of like, because a lot of that ain't what I'm seeing in, in Bricky. Like, man, yeah, I'm not yeah. really talking about the things you're talking about. So, yeah. Talk to me about that if you can. Um, I feel like it's when you go home, isn't it? Like, what's. You get me, and my mom is very like she's a proper like she's a proper Moroccan, and she, she don't speak to me in English. She will speak to me in in um, you get me Derija, which is our like Arabic, but it's our own sort of. So yeah, and I just feel like I've always just remembered um, my roots, and obviously family should be number one for everyone, not just me. Whether you're artist, boxer, or no. Um, plumber, whatever you do, I feel like family should always be number one. That's just the basics in life, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, man. Um, I feel like that's that should just be the basics. It's not a thing of, hear what you're saying, like obviously a lot of, um, in Brixton there's like broken homes and all of that, but 
yeah, I feel like some people just let the environment kind of kind of defeat them. You get me? And yeah, I'm not one of them people in it. You you don't live in, obviously you don't live in Brixton no more. Not anymore. Well, how, how long ago did you move out? I uh, moved out of Brixton in 2019. So, uh, yeah, around them times. A lot of my brethren who who moved out the ends, bro, they always talk about how. Like once they get into London, their radar goes up. Mm. Like, how, how, what's the first change you felt like when you you left Brixton and you moved out? Because Sneakball was saying the same thing to me. Like, so do you know what it is, bro? Yeah, I came out of jail in two thousand and ten. Yeah, and I had my own house in um, Westminster, near Pimlico, in it. So I've, I haven't been in like lived in Brixton. You get me? I've I've always not lived at my mum's since I came out of jail, but I've always gone Brixton. You get me? So when I say I left in 019, that was just um, me saying like, right, I don't, I hardly even go to the hood now because I don't live in London. So it's just, you get me, it becomes long going to the hood every day. But um, yeah, man. The, what's what, what's it like when you move out of the hood for the first time? Do people get it? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. People want you to, where I'm from, people want you to move out of the hood. Obviously, you got some people that don't, but they're not really your people, innit? But your actual people would, yeah, they don't want you to be in that place. You get me? So, yeah, that was that was like a normal thing. And the men them still come check me at where I'm at now. So, yeah, calm. Is it is it more like, I don't know, like, you're not on edge where you live. Like, it's you just, you're now normal. Everything's normal. Normal, bro. Yeah, normal. It just shows how weird it is when you just, when you live in the end, you feel like you're on a front line. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, bro, the end is nuts. Yeah, like, you get me? You just got to be on point, police, this, that, you know how it goes, pagans, whatever. But when you are when you take yourself away from all of that, you get me, and you're living somewhere proper, you know how <laughs> how normal life is meant to be, you get me? And yeah, man, appreciate that now, man. I remember during the lockdown restrictions, you get you were getting harassed quite a lot by the police, I think. Yeah, I that. yeah. Because I, I, I was outdoors during lockdown, man. I was trying to make things happen. I was putting up tapes and I was doing music and I had other things going in and so I was outdoors a lot and yeah I was just getting it left right and centre yeah man yeah, I mean, were you in your live I think you were in your live one time and yeah, yeah a few times yeah yeah like two three times I was on live and they've just yeah it just spun man and just you get me done their thing on one phone you see with, like, I have spoken with quite a few men from Brixton and um, the divide is mad bro mm -hmm. and obviously like I'm not no UN peacemaker peacemaker peacekeeper but Aren't these things that are, has it gone too far or can they not be pieced up or just like? Some some things have gone too far, but some things can be patched up. It depends on it. There's like five different areas in Brixton in it. So it depends on like what specifics man's talking about. But yeah, no, some things can be patterned like and patched up, but some things can't in it. And yeah, to be honest, bro, I'm 30 in it. So it's more of the young Jesus time, you get me? It's what they, like, you get me? That's the place man's from. It's not like the movies where the, the old guys make the phone call and <laughs> nah, the young G's on the ends, that's who's active. You feel what I'm saying, bro? So yeah, it's just a different time, man. You get me, bro? Well, yeah. are, you, are you looking at that or are you just like, just like, just agree to disagree? Are you looking at that type of, Cause it's spilt now. It's gone. It's generational now, isn't it? It's like yeah, yeah, the youngest inherited the, the inherited the beef because they've seen stuff on both sides. Yeah, but you know what it is? As time's gone on, there's just been more beef going on. I don't know if it's because of the social media stuff or whatever. But like, back back in the day, I'm talking like back then. I know you want to be like them OGs. You know that's what talking about back in the day. <laughs> but getting, yeah, getting there now, bro. <laughs> yeah, but where it's just like oh eight, oh seven times. Yeah, there was more respect in the in the place, in it. So like. There was more structure and all that, and now there's there's none of that, bro. Yeah, it's wild, like, isn't it? Yeah, back then it was like beef was basically old men talking and young men dying. That's what it was back then. Now it's not that. Yeah. Now it's just the young G's are talking and the young G's are dying. You get me? The old G's ain't really about like that. They're just doing their thing, making peas, looking after family, whatever. Feel me? But yeah, you should you shouldn't be thirty or touching your thirties on the block doing what. He was doing 10 years ago, you get me. I've wondered, like, for someone who's streamed so much over his career, 
like have you ever had labels like I presume I don't know have you had labels like pull you in for a meeting some of the A&Rs to say hey look as we you know we want to see what's going on if we could do something um yeah I've had a few um label offers and meetings and all of that but I'm just um yeah it's just not me bro why what is it like what because if you had a couple then what is it? is it is it what they stand for or you just didn't like the deals put to you yeah, so some of the deals I just didn't like the, the what the deal was. You get me the like how long they're gonna hold my things for, what the initial like advances and all of that. I just it just wasn't me in it, and like um, how can I explain this? Like I'm a very content guy in it because I know what life could be like in it. So I'm very thankful for what I have now, and yeah, it's just not something I'm willing to risk if like it goes left with the label and then man end up broke or they own all my music I can't you know what I'm saying bro because it, it, it can go right but then it can go left as well and you know what I'm saying you've you've watched um, NWA the movie um, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. you saw how yeah, Ice Cube got down yeah I don't want to be doing that bro. you know what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying bro? In the office, yeah. so I'd rather just hold my corner and just you get me do you you must have friends of artists who've signed deals like, what, what do they tell you what their experiences are like? Well, I've got a close brethren who signed a deal. Um, now, obviously, he's patterned. Everything's calm, isn't it? Um, very good brother as well. He signed a deal, like, a while ago, isn't it? And off the top of my head, I think on Spotify and Apple, he generated, like, stream-wise, generated over, like, £2 million. But when I was speaking to him, it wasn't that. You get me, bro? You get me? So... He didn't even know that raw streams generate that much sort of thing. Man's proper brother as well, man. You get me? I still think about that to this day still. But yeah, I don't want to... At the time, he he had nowhere near what... You get me? What his music generated, in it, And yeah, man, that kind of just threw me off even more. I'm thinking, these fucking labels, fam. You get me? But yeah, man, that's, that's what it is. Do you see... Okay, so like 30 now... I won't say you're gonna retire anytime soon. How do you how do you see this music game? So yeah, it is a young man's sport, uh, somewhat. Yeah, it's a young man's sport still, and I've I've been having plans to retire still from when I was 25. I always said when I'm like around them 30 ages, I'm start looking for the exit door. But yeah, man, it's like I've probably got one two more bits to drop. You get me, and then yeah, I'm out of there, man. How's the how's the fashion? You use your clothing line you got as well, right? Yeah, uh, clothing line. I'm wearing one of the t-shirts now. I was yeah. actually meant to be wearing some of the um, merch stuff that I'm going to be doing as part of the SNFT sale, but I couldn't get hold of it today. But yeah, I got my own clothing brand. That's Amin Ltd. It's on Instagram. We've had that for like five, six years. Yeah, what what me and and it's good quality though. Like, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not it's not just like just a typical. Nah. Print so that... we go for um, we we don't mass produce. We do smaller production, but um, quality in it. So even the other day, I put up something on the story on um, the Amin page. Someone hit me and was like, I've had this Amin tracksuit for five years and this guy's strong and sent me a picture of it compared to his Nikon, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it's just guy's strong, bro. You would have thought he just bought it two weeks ago. So yeah, we tried to go for quality, my bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And is that, is that just, is that, was it, who's working on that with you? I'm not sure there's other people, but. No, it's literally just me and my wife. Really? Yeah, so my wife hand stitches all of the furs onto the hoodies. My wife does everything, bro. Yeah, I don't know how she does it, but she she does everything. And it's literally just me and her. And um, yeah, we we donate 20% to charity as well. So when people like buy an item, they have a choice of what charity to donate the 20% to and this and that. Yeah, man, that's... Nah, that's, that's sick, man. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Sick. So that's proper family business as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little family thing, man. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Do you... Okay, cool. So look... You're a rapper, and I think um, a lot of rappers today, some go into the drill because drill seems to be a cheat code. To and then there's all yeah. then there's other people, some are older, saying, "Nah, real rap is coming back." But mm. I've always looked at it from a, from a rapper perspective. Yeah, has authentic hip hop been shunned by the uh, some of the gatekeepers? Because I, I I look at it and I say, a label could give you a deal that makes sense to you. Yeah, yeah. But it seems like they'd rather give it to someone who's more impressionable than... Yeah, it's business, isn't it? Yeah. And obviously, man's sound ain't the sound that is going to chart. And you get me, bro? It's not one of them, you get me? So I feel like labels would rather, obviously, give um, go to a driller or um, the auto-tune 
brothers, um, you get me? Them sort of people that have a more of a, you know, club sound and all that. When you're rapping, like me and Potter, don't get it twisted. You can chart like Potter's. I think he did chart with his tape, yeah, innit? Yeah, five, yeah. So you like obviously it's possible, but I just feel like it's harder when you make man sort of music, innit? Because nowadays, obviously, I feel like the the sound changes, innit? Every every couple of years, and nowadays I feel like drill and auto tune, even grime, I feel is more popping than UK rap, even though it's been coming back, but. Like, if you count the UK rappers, there's not many, bro, that do that genuine rap that are, like, successful, in it. There's not many, in it. Mm -hmm. You get me? I'd say, what, there's, like, four. Yeah. About that five that genuinely make money from it, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and that's that's going back to your question. I feel like that's why the labels, they all just think it's more of a risk. Um, You get me? But I think, yeah, you're right. No, there's definitely, me being at a label myself, I've seen that, but... Bro, when we did the event with Ditto, mm. bro, it went off. Like yeah, the performance, yeah, yeah. like like the yeah. people mm. were messing with it. Yeah, the streams yeah. will show that, like, that's not small numbers, bro. Yeah. Do you yeah. get it? Yeah. So yeah, that's what I do look at. Mm -hmm. Is it, how does that community of rappers, because that's the authentic rap that we all used to usually grew up on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our own version of it. Yeah, so that's, that's like our age, we grew up on that. Yeah that sort of rap, that, that was the sound that was popping back then. So obviously we'll still listen to it now, but um, the kids in school now, obviously, they're not, they're not growing up on that sort of sound, innit? That's just life, innit? Mm -hmm. So I feel like um, the labels, yeah, they would obviously work with the um, the sound that's more current, innit? How do you feel about TikTok? Uh, I can't fault it. People are changing their lives on TikTok. You get me becoming rich, charting. But it's just not me, in it. I can't. I tried to start a little TikTok account, and I tried to um, go on my phone, and I said, like, "What am I doing, bro? Let's put that shit down, man." You get me, bro? Yeah, it's not me. But uh, bro, I'm all for it because the young G's is. You get me? It's doing the doing them favors, man. You get me, bro? Yeah. yeah. Do you you see the trend now of the samples of everyone just sampling? Like, well, that's more the drill. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been seeing that going around. Yeah, yeah. Do you, could you see yourself? Yeah. Because your music does it have sometimes have some form of samples in it. Yeah, but just what, like, if the producer, I don't answer it. Yeah. It's just if the producer sends it with that sample, then um, man will just hit it if I like the beat. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it won't be like a mad sample, like of a bait song. You get me? It'll be like a low key thing. You know, like, also just on the ditto or just distribution, when do you know when's the right time to, like, start releasing music? Because there isn't no real, like, template that. It's like, yeah, do it every month or every three months. or Because like we're saying, you've got music ready. So yeah. how do you know when's the right time to gauge a release? Uh, me personally, bro, I just I just release when I feel um, what's going on in my life. You get me? Like, if if I'm having, like, a, a good month, then, yeah, music will come out. If if I'm, like, stressed out or man's dealing with real life, I'm not even thinking about putting anything out. So um, just, just how you feel, in it, But... I guess there is a formula, but I don't know it. And I couldn't <laughs> tell people the formula in it. But yeah, me personally, I just I just put out whenever, bro. But I just make sure I release the video on a Thursday and the audio go live on a Friday, innit? Yeah. You get me? So yeah, but there's no um like specific. I don't wait for something to happen or somebody to release or, you know what I'm saying? I just, just put it out. Has there ever been a time where you thought to like give up from music or you just thought, nah, I'm just, I'm, I'm done with it? No, nah, not, I wouldn't say give up, but there's, like, giving up and retiring for me are two different things, isn't it? You get me? I thought of retiring, yeah, but not giving up. Uh, giving up is just, it's a whole other context, isn't it? It's mm. like, oh, I didn't make it, I'm fucked this, I'm giving mm. up. Like, I've never been that guy. Um, but, yeah, retiring, 100%. Why? What What brought that on? Or what, what is retiring into you if it's not... I won't say giving up because you've already had success to an extent. Yeah, it's like, would you say if, okay, Ronaldo, he's going to, let's say, retire, or would you say he's given up in four years? No, you're right. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So it's I'm old, bro. And for me, it's more of a retiring thing, isn't it, than a give up thing. I've been doing this for long. Um, and I'm tired, fam. <laughs> that, that's the, <laughs> you get me, bro? That's it, all honesty. So I've always thought about retiring because I've always known I'm not going to, obviously, be on Grand Daily when I'm 40. 
You know what I'm yeah. saying? Not to not anyone that's doing their thing, but that's just not me, innit? My son will be in his 20s by then. Like, so yeah. he'll probably be on Grime Daily. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that's what it is, man. It's just a retiring thing for me, innit? So I guess there's because there's, there's there's more things you want to do with your life than just, yeah, yeah, yeah. just rapping. Yeah, exactly, man. And um I wouldn't advise anyone to give up on anything they're doing in life in general. Just always go that extra mile, you feel me? And um, if you genuinely, genuinely feel like it's a waste of time, then yeah, there's something called being smart, bro, and saving yourself some time and then just wrapping it up. But if you feel like there's light at the end of the tunnel, just keep going, man. You get me? And I guess that must be like, like you're 30, bro, you're not old, but like when you're in your 20s, you're 30, like, yeah, you're old. Yeah, and when exactly, you're 30, yeah, yeah. you're 40, bro, you're old. Yeah, you get me, bro. <laughs> so it's just, it just keeps on going on. But yeah. the, young, the, the young kids in Brixton, the artists, like, it seems like they chase the, the upfront check more. Yeah. Not, not, not in Brixton, let me start again. The young guys in general today yeah, yeah, seem yeah. to be taking the upfront check and it's like hard if they're getting offered a quarter of a million yeah, yeah, yeah. for a song. So do you ever talk to them about the long game or the long term plan? I do still, yeah. I've spoken to a couple of the young G's musically about like how to kind of survive in this thing. Um, my, like Someone like me, for example, I don't make millions off of music but I know how to stay and make money off of music for a long time. Um, I've seen people come make like a million pound in two years, but then they're broke the rest of their career after that, spent the money. You know how life goes. Yep. Um, so yeah, my, my one thing I can say is I know how to kind of maintain and not like at a, a high level, but definitely not at a, Tiny levels, or I, I could just, I know how to stay above water in it. That's my thing, in it. Do you ever get, like, because I want, like, I see, got the nice watch, the, the chain's beautiful, by the way. I yeah, see, I see, level, like, yeah. everything's looking. Yeah. But I, I, every time I've seen you about, I don't feel like you're one of them people who's you're trying to overdo it. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Do you get me? Yeah, no, definitely not. It's, um, the other day, bro, I pop a picture, um, my baby in her buggy, it's on my Instagram, and, um, Someone messaged me and was like, why is the buggy only 300 pound? For what? Yeah, and obviously what was mad was, um, in the photo itself, he was like to me, oh, you're dripped out and your your baby's buggy's 300 pound. And again, it's just like this day and age you live in, but the worst thing was I wasn't even dripped out. My coat was like a bills. My jeans were like, even like, you know, bro, these jeans are like 80 pound, bro. I don't do the Madamiri test, not me. I'm not that guy <laughs> yeah, yeah. in it. I don't, you get me. But um, yeah, and I had a little combo with him, innit? You get me on the gram and all that. And I was just like, do you want my baby's buggy to be two racks? And he was like, no, nah, man, but like, this thing is just an illusion because you're dripped out and then your baby's buggy is three bills. Wait, there's someone that you don't know, just a random person? Don't know, but yeah, but I always like having yeah, conversations yeah, yeah. with people, like just see how people think, innit? Yeah. And then, yeah, man, after the convo, he was like, nah, do you know what, bro, you're right, no, 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 because it just didn't make sense, you get me, like... Mm -hmm. Some people, they, they, they'll they spend two racks on a buggy and like, and you're gonna use it for six months. And it's this thing of like, raw, they need to show people that they're doing well, like online, but you don't, bro, like having a fucking Fendi stroller don't mean you're doing well. Cause I know people with Fendi strollers that are surviving, bro. Facts, yeah. They're surviving, bro, literally surviving, like, and yeah, man, it's just, yeah, you get me, bro. I don't know if I'm too old, fam, but that was, for me, that was shocking. Like, I was like, is this how people think nowadays? Like, you get me? Mm. So, and it's worrying because obviously man, my son's 11, isn't it? So I don't want him to be going on social media. Um, obviously, when people are on social media, we all know people love posting on their best days, yeah? Um, and then just, you get me just thinking, oh, like, yeah, man, need that, that, I want this, no, no, no. Cause that that is for me the real illusion. It's like man are faking it online, and then in real life man are broke. And then when you see a man nowadays being real online, real is not respected anymore because everyone else is doing the fake, fake at yeah. such a high level that <laughs> it's replaced the real. <laughs> real just looks like you're a joke, man. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying, bro. So yeah, that's you get me, man. Sorry to go on about that. No, but no, I feel like yeah, man. It's just yeah, man. You get me. Like, okay, so I like to ask people what's the lesson they've learned in the music industry. You've been in it for how many? How many years is it? Are you, are you classifying? Um, pr 
properly 2010, but I start, my first track I made was in 07. Ah, right, cool. So you see, that's why we're the same generation. I started my platform 2010. Okay. Bro, and I tell people all the time, what that, bro, we didn't even know what High Street Kensington was. Nothing. Bro, we didn't know what a playlist was. Nothing. Like, we had to all try and get, the game plan was print up your own CDs. That's and it. Pray that HMV will take it. That's and it. just sail and return. That's it, yeah. Get me like, so like from then till now, like what, what would you say? Some of like the lessons you've learned now just operating in the music industry as an independent artist. Um, man's learned a lot since then, obviously, but the mm -hmm. game's fucking changed so much yeah. since 2010, bro. Do you know what I mean? Um, but the, my main thing that I've learned, bro, is honestly, yeah, forget everything else, forget like the streams, the money and all of that, the show. All you need in this thing is like self-belief and consistency. And that's that's the main thing. And I feel like that's with anything in life. You get me? Um, a lot of people, bro, you'll be surprised. They actually don't have that, bro. No, like, no. You get me? It will be like their friends that's proper pushing them. But for themselves, they won't do it. Do you know what I'm saying, bro? And yeah, I feel like we would have had so many more artists you get me? More talent if people just had some more self-belief and not like put out one song and then say, oh, fuck this, this is long and then quit or you get me, bro? Yeah, no, I, so, I, I see it a lot. Yeah, I've seen a lot, bro. A lot, a lot of talent, bro, gone to waste, bro. A lot of fucking talent, bro. Just because man don't believe in themselves, bro. You get me? Man genuinely just don't believe in themselves and I don't get it. Like, so. Especially now when it could be a way out. Yeah, man. You get me, bro? Back then, in old ten and that, believing mm. in yourself was a different to believing in yourself. Bro, now, I bro. those times that no one wanted to claim that were well, you a rapper? No, 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 no. No, you was a joke man back yeah. then. If you was a rapper, I'd be like, well, you're a rapper, you're a joke man. Like, yeah, go studio, brother. Man will bust jokes at you. Yeah. You're just wasting your time. Like, yeah. you, you get me, bro. But yeah, so yeah, no, times have changed, man. But the factors of it is like the dedication and self belief, still, bro. That's the main thing for me that I've learned is very important in this game, still. You probably kind of added it to what I was going to ask you, but do you know what your purpose is now then? Like, I guess personally and, in, and also in music. Um, in terms of? Like, like what's your what's the end goal of music? And also for you, there's, there's a life outside of music. So okay, got What you. are you trying to achieve there? Um, bro, I'm just trying to just like basically let people understand you, you can do this thing independently. And obviously there's levels to independence. There's people with like, 200k marketing budgets screaming they're independent so nowadays there's proper levels to this independent thing and i'm like independent independent in terms of like if someone sends me an email if me and my wife don't see it you ain't getting a response bro <laughs> like it's everything has to get done by man like finding beats creating the artwork for the song um if you get me like just everything everything you can think of bro literally so um, I want people to understand that, yeah, it's it's possible to do it that route and still have like a a career, you get me? And um, you don't have to sign off your rights or like if you make one big song, you don't have to sign that away to the label. You can, you get me? You can just pattern and manoeuvre yourself and stay independent. Yeah, man, as I'm, I'm going to leave it there, man. I think when we get the, the new project, yeah. After this project, yeah, yeah, you get yeah, me? On, yeah. We're, we're gonna we're gonna sit down, but I think yeah, it's just it's key to highlight that this um, partnership with Populous is like it's something I'm intrigued to see because I know that once this interview comes out and people start looking at it and they see the effects of it, it it's gonna be like a case study. Hundred percent, and I, I'm excited to get it cracking still because, bro, like I said, I'm still learning at the same time in it. So, but I'm proper proper excited still because yeah, man, should be sick still.